الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد ايها الاحبه في الله continuing on in our study of shar sunnah by imam babahari rahimahullah ta'ala we reach the portion of the treaties where imam babahari rahimahullah ta'ala spoke about masih ad-dajjal about the antichrist and this is the 25th point uh, in the treaties in Imam Babahari's treaties and this will give, give us an illustration of what the Salaf of this Ummah the Salaf of Salih Ridwan Allahi Alayhim what they believed about Dajjal and this is in contrast to some of our brothers and sisters of this time who distort the ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and say that it's metaphorical say that it means the UN say that it refers to uh, Bush say that it refers to Obama say that it refers to the New World Order uh, etc all of these type of inferences that come from their own intellect their own aqul does not come from the ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam nor do they have the right to make fayas nor do they have the right to make analogies and to re-explain those ahadith which the Salaf of this Ummah radiallahu ta'ala majma'in beginning with the Sahaba who were the asal of the Jama'ah what they already explained for us and what the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam awalin wal akhirin explained as far as the Dajjal so we take the Nasus yes on their dhahir on their apparent meaning why? Because this is what the Prophet ﷺ gave us. The Sahaba didn't speculate about the Dajjal. They asked the Prophet ﷺ about his characteristics, not about a system's characteristics, not about a New World Order's characteristics, not about uh, a new technology and its characteristics. No, but rather about literally uh, an individual. And this is how the Salaf of this Ummah understood these ahadith. And this is how the... Akhir, the 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 mutaakhirin uh, or the ulama of this day and age, how they understand this hadith, those who follow the minhaj of the salaf of this ummah, rahimahumullah, jami'in. Imam Baba Hari rahimahullah ta'ala said, Qal, Wal iman bi masih ad dajjal. He said, and believing in the Antichrist or the Messiah at Dajjal. And this is from the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. This is why Imam Barbahari rahmatullah is mentioning this, is mentioning the Messiah at Dajjal because the Ummah is united upon that. The Ummah from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is united upon the authenticity of those ahadith about the Dajjal. You'll find them in Bukhari and Muslim. And Ayyullah Habatifillah, let's see what some of the Imams of this day and the Imams from before, the Mutaqaddameen. And in fact, let's go to the Mutaqaddameen before we go to the Mutaakhari. Let's go to those early Imams who all of us, uh, I believe, respect and love and benefit from, like Imam Anawawi. What did Imam Anawawi say in his explanation of Sahih Muslim? This is what Imam Anawawi said. So you compare Imam Noawi's statements to what uh, brother, uh, the brother from South Africa uh, who does the U UN and New World Order videos explaining these ahadith about the Dajjal, saying that they're metaphorical, saying that they are analogies, saying that they have such and such meaning and they mean this and they mean that and this is uh, uh, something which refers to the drone strikes and this one refers to this. Let's see what Imam Noawi, let's compare his statements to what Imam Noawi said, if you love the Salaf of this Ummah. Imam, Imam Noawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his explanation of Sahih Muslim said, uh, the title that Imam uh, Muslim gave this title, he said, Bab dhikr al-Dijjal wa sifatuhu wa ma ma'ahu. Imam Muslim. He named this chapter, and you'll find this, you can find this in the English text as well. The, the, the proper, uh, or a, uh, the translation, where he said the chapter mentioning the Dajjal, or the Antichrist, 
his characteristics and who is with him. This is the t chapter Imam Muslim entitled it. And then he mentioned some of the ahadith. I'm going to read to you just a small portion of what Imam Nawawi said about this chapter after explaining many of those ahadith. And this is sufficient for us to understand that our brother has went astray, uh, Imran Hussein, brother Imran Hussein, has went astray with regards to these ahadith and his minhaj, his methodology of understanding the text of the Qur'an and the text of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's the hujjah, ayyallah habbati fillah. The hujjah is this. What is the dalil? Am I just speaking from Hawa? Or are we speaking from Kitabi Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the fahim of the salaf of this ummah? Let's hear what the, the salaf of this ummah said. What Imam al uh said. In, in gathering the statements of the Salaf and understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. Qala Imam Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala about this. Qad sabaqa fi sharh khutbat al-kitab khutbat al-kitab bayan ishtiqaqahu wa ghayrihi wa sabaqa fi kitab al-salat bayan tasmiyatihi al-masih wa ishtiqaqihi wa khilaf fi dhabtihi So Imam Nawawi began by saying he's already uh, given the explanation in the beginning of this this chapter or the beginning of this book about where the term uh, Masih is derived from and he's already explained in the book of Salat about the name uh, why he was called Masih why he was called Masih and what is derived from it and the differences with regards to the book or the uh, the actual uh, the differences uh, per pertaining to that. He said, "Qala Qadi," and I believe this is referring to Qadi bin Iyad, rahimahullah taala. He goes, "Hadi al ahadith alati dhakraha Muslim wa ghairihi fi qissa al dajjal hujja li madhab ahl al haqi." This is imperative that we get this statement and we understand the statement. This is what Imam Qadi bin, uh, Ibn, uh, Qadi bin uh, Iyad said, and this is what Imam Nawawi is relating his statement. He said, these ahadith, these narrations, which Imam Muslim uh, mentioned, and other than him from the muhaddithin, like Bukhari wa ghayr, about the story about the Dajjal are a hujjah or proof or evidence for the madhab of Ahla Haq. Look at that, Ayyullah Habba This is a hujjah, this is dalil, this is evidence for the minhaj or the madhab of uh, the methodology or the understanding of the people of the truth, meaning Ahla Hadith, Ahla Athar, the Salaf of this Ummah, and those who follow Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah, this is a hujjah for their method, meaning that they believe in this. This is proof. These ahadith, because they believe in them. Fisiha, Fisiha tu, Fisiha ti, Wujudi. And for the, uh, the authenticity of his, of him being, uh, of, uh, in existence. Wa ennuhu shakhs bi aynihi. Ubtulia Allahu bihi ibadihi wa akdaruhu ala ashya min makdurati lahi ta'ala min ahyal al mait aladi yaktuluhu. Imperative, we understand this statement. This is the, the hujjah right here, which destroys the methodology of Brother Imran Hussein and those who follow and want to make analogies and. Uh, with the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or say they are um, that they are are not literal, or that they can explain it away to mean something in the uh, to to put it in context in our day and age, and based upon their inferences. Here's what Imam Qadi bin Iyad and Imam Nawawi is in agreement with him. He said, "This is the madhab of Ahl Haq with regards to the." Uh, existence of the Dajjal and that he is a shakhs, that he is a person he is a being bi'aynihi he didn't say just shakhs, he didn't just stop there he said shakhs bi'aynihi he said he is an individual uh, a specific individual 
letting us know it's not the UN. We don't refer to the dollar as the Dajjal. We don't refer to the UN as the Dajjal. This is not the meaning. That's why we have to be careful. Okay, fine. You can find the dangers and the evil, the Illuminati, this and that and the other, all those dangerous things. Fine, from a political standpoint. But do not try to uh, authenticate and try to take the text from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and try to apply it to those things based upon your inferences with no delil from the Salaf of this Ummah. This is what's problematic. And this is where you end up making mistakes. Look at what Imam Qadi bin Iyad said again, وَأَنَّهُ شَخْصْ بِعَيْنِهِ And that he is a specific individual. أُبْتُلِيَ اللَّهُ بِهِ عِبَادِي Allah test his slaves with him, by him, by the Dajjal, the Messiah, the Dajjal, the Antichrist. وَأَقْدَرُهُ عَلَىٰ أَشْيَا مِنْ مَقْدُرَاتِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ مِنْ أَحْيَا الْمَيْتِ الَّذِي يَقْدُرُهُ And also part of this test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed upon His servants by creating the Dajjal to, to, is, as a test for us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is given the Dajjal powers to do things. And from the things that Allah the Almighty has given Him is the power to bring back the dead after killing them because this is one of the tests that we will that those people who live during the time of the Dajjal will see and that that's the shahid there that I wanted to read from Sahih Muslim from the explanation from the most recognized and one of the most important explanations of Shari, uh, of Sahih Muslim is the explanation of Imam An-Nawawi rahmatullahi alayhi rahimahullah jami'an wa ala ulama muslimin Imam Buk uh, Bukhari narrated in the chapter Afflictions and the End of the World, narrated Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, I heard Allah's apostle in his prayer seeking refuge with Allah from the afflictions of the Dajjal. And we already know this, that the end of our salat, that we say that dua, uh, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the punishment of the, uh, the hellfire, أَعُوذِ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ مِنْ أَذَابِ جَهَنَّمْ وَأَذَابِ قَبْرٍ وَأَذَابِ الْمَحْيَى وَمَمَاتٍ وَمَسِيحَ الْدِجَالِ أو كما قال في الدعاء that we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa taala from the punishment of the hellfire, from the punishment of the grave, and the punishment of the Messiah الدجال. Those are three of the things that we seek refuge with in that dua. In that dua. Affirms for us, and that's evidence and dalil that those are real things and a part of the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah that we believe that there is, of course, a, a hellfire, and we believe also that there is a Dajjal, a, a Messiah Dajjal, as the Prophet explained to us about, about him. And we also believe in the punishment of the grave, that these are real, these are not metaphorical things. We don't say that they mean this or we mean this or it possibly means this. Instead, we Stay with the Nasus, and this is the madhab of the Salaf. That's what makes the Salaf from the early generations of the Sahaba to the Salafiyun of this day and age. That's what distinguishes them from other sects and groups is because they go with the Dahir and the Nasus unless there's evidence to show us that it is not in accordance with apparent meaning. We go with evidence. We don't go with our own desires and our own inferences over the Nasus. And this is the Madhab of Ahl Sunnah. And this is what Imam Babahadi is trying to make clear for us all throughout his books. And what Shaykh Al Islam in the later generations makes very clear and wrote what? A five or six volume book about the subject of taking preference of the Nasus, of the text, over the intellect, over your intellect, what your intellect, because all of our intellect is at different levels and it leads us to different inferences. Imam Bukhari said, Rahmatullah in the chapter, The Virtues of Medina, he said, narrated Abu Sa'id al Khudri, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Prophet وسلم, told us a long narrative about a Dajjal. And among the many things he mentioned was his saying, a Dajjal will come, and it will be forbidden for him to pass through the entrances of Medina. He will land in some of the salty, barren areas outside of Medina. On that day, the best man 
or one of the best men will come up to him and say, I testify that you are the same Dajjal whose uh, description was given to us by Allah's apostle, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A Dajjal will say to the people, if I kill this man and bring him back to life again, will you doubt my claim? They will say no. Then a Dajjal will kill that man and bring him back to life. That man will say, now I know your reality better than before. A Dajjal will say, I want to kill him, but I cannot. This is what the Prophet ﷺ said. From the fawaid that we see, which is a refutation, if we go back to the nasus of the minhaj of Brother Imran, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us in him, is we see that a man will go to, to, this, to the Dajjal, that the Dajjal will not enter Medina. Okay, if the Dajjal is the dollar, the dollar is already in Medina. You can already exchange the currency. All of these other things, the New World Order, this and that, the other, <coughs> all of these things that doesn't make logical sense from the path of logic, if we want to go back to what they prefer to make their own inferences and their own intellect, that doesn't make sense. We cannot explain these uh, events to mean the dollar or the symbol of the dollar or the new world order or a single currency or uh, a, a single sovereign state or non-sovereignty with a world government. We can't use those things. They don't make sense with these nasus. No matter how we try to explain it away and how we try to gain a new understanding, it doesn't make sense. But rather, it is as the Salaf explained, and it is as the ulama of this time and age and throughout time have explained, as Imam Manawawi uh, agreed with, that Imam Qadi bin, uh, bin Iyad uh, mentioned that, that he is a shakhs bi'aynihi, that he's a specific individual. He's an individual. He's not a dollar, he's not a symbol, he's not the New World Order. And that he will not be able to enter Medina and Mecca. And the man, what did the man say? Believing in the Nasus. The Prophet ﷺ prophesied that this man would believe in the Nasus and say, I testify that you are the same Dajjal whose description was given to us by Allah's apostle, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The man testified that it was according to the description of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not to the description of brother Imran or other than Imran. Uh, also, in another hadith, in Sahih Bukhari, in the book of Fitr, narrated Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, which is another narration, which is basically to the same, uh, has the same meaning as the other. And then Sahih Muslim will also find in the Kap Kitab of Fitr, Ibn Umar reported that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made mention of the Dajjal in the presence of the people and said, Allah is not one eye. And behold, that Dajjal is blind uh, in the right eye, and his eye would be like a floating grape. This is the description of the Dajjal. We don't have to make inferences. Well, a floating grape that resembles the pyramid in the, the eye in the pyramid, or uh, that single eye is like the symbol, symbol of the Masons or the Illuminati, or no, Ayyul Habitifillah. Take the Nasus as it is, because all of that does not jive with the other hadith we mentioned. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah is not hidden from you. He is, uh, 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 he is not one eye. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have a single eye. And pointed with his hands towards his eye, adding, while a Masih Dajjal is blind in the right eye. Ayla habitifillah. We take the nusus as they are. Allah's Apostle ﷺ said, there are angels guarding the entrances or roads of Medina. Neither plague nor a Dajjal will be able to enter it. The Prophet wasallam said, he used to seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the torment of the uh, hell, the torment of the grave, and a Masiyah Dajjal. The Prophet wasallam said in the hadith of Abu Darda, he said, if anyone learns by heart the first ten verses of Surah Al-Kaf, he will be protected from the Dajjal. The Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith in Sahih Muslim, narrated by Anas ibn Malik who said that the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said, the Dajjal would be followed by 70,000 Jews of Asfahan, 
wearing Persian shawls. So we believe that. We don't give it a new description and a new ta'wil. The Prophet said in the hadith of Abri, uh, uh, Abri, uh, Abi Bakr, he said, the terror caused by Masih Dajjal would not enter Medina, and at the time Medina will have seven gates, and there will be two angels at each gate guarding them. The Prophet ﷺ said, a Dajjal will come and encamp at a place close to Medina, and then Medina will shake twice, whereupon every kafir, disbeliever, and hypocrite will go out of Medina towards him. Why has it been May Allah protect us from that terror. And that doesn't mean that the believers are going to go towards a dollar, but they're going to be inclined towards a new world order. That, those kind of things, that is knowledge. This knowledge here is knowledge of the ghayb that the Prophet wasallam has given us, and we believe it. But as far as inferring and taking it to some strange new uh, understanding, this is what we refrain from. That is the madhab of Ahl haq the Prophet ﷺ said at Dajjal, about the Dajjal, that he would have water and fire with him. What was seen to be fire would be cold water, and what was seen to be water would be fire. So there are many ahadith. The Prophet ﷺ said the hour would not be established until nearly 30 imposters, Dajjal, appeared, each of them claiming that he is the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa ayyadhu billah, min kufrihim, wa ilhadihim, wa had a deception. The Prophet said in Jamia uh, Tirmidhi, God, I heard the message. Uh, the Prophet said, Isa bin Maryam will kill the Dajjal at the gate of Lud. So, the, so Isa والسلام, will kill the Dajjal. Does that mean Isa is going to destroy the New World Order? And Isa is going to destroy the dollar or burn the dollar or whatever? type of ta'wil, brother Imran and others have, ayyul habati fillah, don't fall for that, but rather go with the nasus and be safe, we don't know knowledge of those the unseen, we know what the Prophet sallallahu has given us and we believe it as it came, as it was revealed, and we go, we don't go beyond the bounds of the salaf and you're safe, you're definitely safe, but when you make inferences, is where you can get into danger. Where you make mistakes about Allah's deen, that you don't have the right to do so. Where you may speak about Allah, and lie about Allah, and you don't have the right to do so. And that's one of the major sins. Narrated in Sharik, that the Prophet wasallam said, The people will flee from the Dajjal, such that they will go to the mountains. Um Sharik said, O Messenger of Allah, where will the Arabs be that day? He said, they will be few. The Prophet ﷺ said, people will run away from the Dajjal, seeking shelter in the mountains. And this is collected in Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said, he uh, used to seek refuge with Allah from the torment of the grave and the trial of the Dajjal. And he said, you will be tested in your graves. Again, that's an affirmation. The Dajjal exists and that the punishment of the grave exists and the hellfire exists. May Allah protect us from it. And there's many, many ahadith which speak about the Dajjal, ayyul habati fillah, and we accept it as the Salaf accepted it, and we don't make ta'wil. Imam Fuzan, hafadhullahu uh, <coughs> ta'ala said, with regards to uh, this point in the uh, Shara Sunnah, he said, min asoola ahla sunnati wal jama'ah, iman bin misiyya Dajjal. He said that this is from the uh, foundation of ahla sunnati wal jama'ah, is that they believe in misiyya Dajjal, the Antichrist. وَهُوَ رَجِلْ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمْ يَخْرُجُ مِنْ فِي الْيَهُودِ وَيَأْتَبَهُ الْيَهُودِ وَهُوَ مَهْدِي الَّذِي يَنْتَذَرُهُ الْيَهُودِ لِأَنَّ الْمَهْدِي كُلُّ يَدَاعِهِ الْيَهُودِ يَدْعُونَهُ وَمَهْدِيَهُمْ وَهُوَ مَسِيَ الدَّجَّالِ وَالشِّيْعَ يَنْتَذَرُونَ الْمَهْدِي الْمُخْتَفِي فِي سِرْدَ from the usul of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah is that the Masih al Dajjal ex uh, exists and will come at the end of time. And that he is a man, as Imam bin Fozan says, from the children of Adam, meaning he's a human being. 
and he will come to the Jews and they will follow him and he is their Messiah that they have been waiting for <coughs> and that all that many of them uh, many people they claim that they're they have a Messiah and that Yahud uh, claim that they're Mahdi and uh, claim that they have a Mahdi or a Messiah and he is the Messiah Dajjal and the Shia meaning the Rafada and other Shia groups that believe like the Rafada and the 12 uh, the ones who believe in the 12 Imams and etc they also are waiting for the Mah they call the Mahdi al muhtafi that is they believe that he's already alive and that he is waiting in a place called Sardab He's hidden in a place called Sirdab, which I believe may be possibly in Iran, somewhere in the mountains. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. As they claim, and that he, they claim that he is from the, uh, this Mahdi is from the uh, descendants of Hussein, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, they wait for the Mahdi as well. But they believe the Mahdi is in accordance with the Ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the many ahadith that are sahiha mutawatira fi fi ma'na wa huwa rajulun min bayt rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wasallam so ahl sunnah believes that the mahdi is someone from the family of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam one of his descendants from ali hussein from the descendants of al, uh, ali hassan ibn ali ibn abi talib radiyallahu ta'ala so they believe that he is a descendant of hassan bin bin, uh, bin ali ibn abi talib radiyallahu ta'ala not uh, Hussein, and that he will appear at the last, at the end of time, and the Muslims will. This is the uh, we're talking about the 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 Mahdi, not the Messiah Dajjal here, and that the Mahdi will appear in the last days, and that the Muslims will make bayat to him. They will make the oath of allegiance to him as in, as the Imam for the Muslims, and they will fight jihad with him. Fisabilillah and they will spread justice all throughout the earth. This is all through prophecy of the Prophet ﷺ that we believe. And the Muslims, and he will pray as the Imam for the Muslims. Will you sell the Muslimin? And during this time, that the Dajjal, the, the, during this time, the Dajjal will appear. This Antichrist will appear. And the Muslims will be with the Mahdi at this time. Until Jesus, the son of Maryam, uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, will ascend to the earth. Uh, will descend to the earth. And then at this time there will be two Masih. As Imam bin Fulzan says, Masih al-Dalala, wa huwa al-Dajjal, wa Masih al-Hidayah, wa huwa Isa bin Maryam, alayhi salatu wa He said at that time there will be two Dajjal, uh, two, a'udhu billah, two uh, Masih. Masih al-Dalal, the Masih of misguidance, and this is the Dajjal, and the Masih, Masih of guidance, and this is Jesus, beloved Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam. And then Imam bin Fulzan explains uh, that the Dajjal, as the ulama before him explained, that he, uh, one of the names is because he will move so quickly throughout the earth, is one of the reasons that he has this name of Masih is that he will be uh, he will spread from place to place throughout the earth very rapidly <clears throat> and he will spread evil and fitna wherever he goes and the Dajjal is also uh, it's from the Sigal to Mubalaga in the Arabic language Dajjal uh, whereas Dajjal means someone who is a liar Dajjal in the Arabic a Dajjal this means it's emphasized it's from the Sigha Mubalaga meaning that it, it's, it's uh, extra emphasized I don't know how we articulate that in English but that it is, it is emphasized uh, even more so even more so and the, the, that's because the Dajjal he will be the greatest of liars and it's spreading wickedness and facade in the earth so much so, his lies reach to the extent أَنَّهُ يَدَّعِي أَنَّهُ هُوَ اللَّهُ Allah, Because he will lie and deceive many people throughout the earth claiming that he is Allah Azza wa Jal 
and he will cause fitna through the people throughout the lands with the people. And many people will apostate who were Muslims by following him, except for those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored with the bat. And with him will be Jannah and Nar. He will have he will have paradise in the hellfire with him. And he will be able to do uh I don't know if we claim these evil actions as miracles. In Arabic, they refer to them as khawarik. So they're like, uh, and they're called khawarik shaytaniya, meaning that they are deceptive, uh, like magic or deceptive uh, tricks and, and things that, that appear to be miracles. Miracles are good things, but these are not miracles. Miracles like the Prophet alayhim after salatu wasalam and some of the awliya had. But rather, these are things that Allah has given this uh, Dajjal in order to be a test for mankind. <coughs> and these are devilish tricks that this Dajjal will possess, deceiving the people with evil and fitna and testing the slaves of Allah Azza wa Jal. Those are just some of the things about the Dajjal, and we've mentioned many of the things which come directly from the Nasus of the uh, text, and Isa alayhi salatu wasalam will kill the Dajjal, walhamdulillah, and we ask Allah the Almighty to protect us from the evil of the Masih, a Dajjal, and guide us and guide our brothers and sisters who have a misunderstanding about this, to not go beyond the text. May Allah guide us all and bless us with a class with a bat because at any time any of us could go astray and be misguided. Anything I said correct was from Allah Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.